Hi everyone, that's your how. Uh, it's Galen here. How's it going? I hope you all are doing well. Um, I've been looking forward to having this time with you just to kind of, you know, give you a little life update uh, and maybe even, you know, show you a little bit of my studio. I'm here in my home studio in Nashville, Tennessee. So this is the room where I really spend a lot of my time uh, working and creating, writing new songs, and I thought maybe I'd give you a little tour of it. So over here I have, uh, so this is kind of, this is a Neumann U87 here. This mic I use for my voice a lot. And if I don't use that one, I use this SM7. Uh, I probably use this one more actually. So a lot of the songs like from Apolog and those were recorded on that. And um, yeah, so this is what the studio looks this way. Got some stained glass and this little, Roxy found that at an antique store and it's kind of cool. It has these little like speakeasy doors. So it comes out and there's a little mirror. Ha ha, very cool. So, and then over here, a little fireplace and some old books. I love globes too. So I have a couple globes. This is my Taylor acoustic guitar, which I brought on the tour, uh, the 2019 tour, and I think the 2016 one too. My other acoustic is this Breed Love. I love this one. And I use that one a lot as well. And up here on my ukuleles, I love these. They're made by Kala. And, uh, that's my favorite ukulele brand. I also have this ukulele bass, which I use a lot. I've used that on, uh, let's see, Deeper Waters and Everything's Fine. I, I use that one a lot, I like that. And uh, so yeah, it's just a room. And oh, over here, this is kind of cool. This was a gift from Judy. She made that by hand in 2016 and gave it to me. Judy Wu, she helps me with a lot of my Chinese social media, so it was a very nice gift, I thought, and uh, I decided to put it up in my studio. So yeah, that's, and you can see behind me more globes and old world maps. I just like a lot of like, kind of imagery that reminds me of um, old things and, you know, different times in the world, like the Renaissance era or the Middle Ages or, uh, you know, different times than now that aren't aren't so modern, but still kind of inspire me, just the aesthetics of them. So I try to incorporate that into my studio. And some some people have said that my studio reminds them, well, particularly because of the, the fireplace and stuff over here and the old books, kind of like an English study. And so some people have called it a studio Ha ha ha. So not a very funny joke. But um, yeah, so that's this is kind of where I work. And it's a it's a modest room. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, songs these days, you don't really need a huge recording studio to get great results. So if you know how to use what you have, um, and you have a, you know, a little bit of good equipment and, and knowledge of how to use plugins and things and software, then you can get great results just in a room. I, I have some guys who, I know some guys, friends here in Nashville who just record their vocals like just in a closet and get great results. So it's pretty cool. And actually I prepared something very special for you. I've been thinking, planning this and uh, preparing for this for a while. And now I'm going to do a special acoustic concert just for you, please enjoy. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is the first time I've ever done something like this, so it's an, an online concert. Pretty cool. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining. We're going to sing some songs, and this is called Fragrance.
you may have heard of, but you never seen. A feeling that you've known, but only in your dreams. A gentle wind of hope you could believe. Am I the fragrance of it? The fragrance of it? What you didn't know that you him until now but you know you want it am I the fragrance of it could the new age dawn like a joyful melody Could the nightmares fade from your memory? And I try and I fall when my heart beats with love for you. Am I the fragrance of it? What you didn't know that you were missing until now But you know you want it Am I the fragrance of it? Good job, DJ. Oh, thank you. I'm going to sing an old song that uh, I wrote, gosh, it was about eight years ago, and it was one of the first songs that I wrote with my friend Roger Cook, who is a British songwriter that has been a, a great gift to me and my artist career. And so uh, we wrote this song, like a lot of songs, uh, at his kitchen table. And it was just the two of us, me with my acoustic guitar and him with his ukulele. And we wrote a lot of songs that way, which ended up becoming the album called Acoustic Daydreams. So from that album, the song is called What If I Loved You. What if I loved you, thought of you only? Woke up each morning dreaming about your blue eyes staring at me. What if I wonder what it would be like hearing you say that I am the one you've been waiting for? got one heart 
it's never been broken And I gotta be careful Who I give it to And so what if I told you All that I'm feeling I really want to But I'm a little scared You may not I've only got one heart It's never been broken And I gotta be What if I loved you, thought of you only Woke up each morning, dreaming about your blue eyes Staring at me Staring at me Staring at me Well, thank you again. And uh, I thought about the songs that I was going to sing. And um, I looked over all your requests. And uh, I'm going to be singing a lot of the songs that you guys asked for. And you asked me to sing one new song. And so I'm about to sing a song called The Weightless, which I just wrote recently uh, this year. Uh, I wrote this song just thinking about um, getting to a place where I could feel free and feel unencumbered, it's a big English word, but to feel uh, unburdened by maybe everything that was going on around me and in the world and somehow have uh, freedom and peace internally, no matter what was happening to me or around me. And so that's kind of the idea of this song. I've never sung it before, and so this is DJ and I, this is our first time playing or singing this song, so you know, it's, it might be mama hoo hoo, but uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna try it out and hope you like it. It's called Weightless. For the shadow of this fight Can you recall what it was like Held down for so long Do you think we could be Weightless and free Do you think we could find our way through All the thorns and the weeds So we're weightless and free See the color, the light The end of the tunnel in sight Do you think we could be Weightless and free That's wrong. 
Do you think we could be Weightless and free Do you think we could fly Above the storm Over every gun That's prone to be So weightless and free Weightless and free Well, I hope you guys liked that. I have a lot of new songs, which uh, I'm, I'm very eager to show you, but uh, that was the one that was maybe most comfortable of the ones that are new that I can sing at this point. But I know many of you guys wanted to know if I'd uh, had any, if I have any new songs coming out, and the answer is yes. I've got a new EP I'm working on, and uh, a lot of new songs, several of which are inspired directly by you all in my time in China and uh, getting to know uh, many of the people there and everybody I've met at the shows. And DJ and I had a wonderful time on the last tour. Amazing. What were some highlights for you on the, the 2019 tour? I really liked seeing all of the people, uh, just so many awesome fans that you have. And I love the skyscrapers, big fan of skyscrapers. We went in, a, in the top of a couple of In them. Shanghai, right? Shanghai yeah. and in Shenzhen. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So we, we had a wonderful time, and we really can't wait to be back, and uh, we know that that'll happen soon. So... Uh, this next song uh, is due to popular request, and uh, I'm really grateful for the way that you guys have responded to uh, several of the songs on Apolog. And so this is a song from the Apolog collection uh, called Sandcastles. <laughs>
the ocean wave came gently down Collapsing mice and castles all around When I was the one who needed it most of all I was the one who needed it Thank you so much. This is an interesting experience, just uh, imagining you all, but I know you're there, and I'm looking at you now. So um, I'm going to sing a song that uh, has meant a lot to me over the years, and uh, it's interesting, you know, in my own journey, um, some songs have kind of uh, come from a place of inspiration where I sort of had, you know, things going on in my imagination that I saw. This is very uh, nebulous language, but go with me for a second. When I'm writing songs, I'll see things in my head and in my imagination, and sometimes it's, um, it's myself or it's other people or things happening in the world. And so the process of songwriting for me is very much capturing those things um, that I see in my head, in my imagination, that I think are pure and good uh, and maybe have some, some weight or purpose to them, capturing those things and actually pulling them into songs that then I release and then other people get to enter into that and experience that and I'm communicating a message. And this next song I'm going to sing for me was um, just came from a place of thinking about the longing that we all have in our hearts for identity, to know who we are, and for uh, purpose, to know what are we here for, what are we trying to do, what are we uh, living for. And um, those longings are, are things that we all share in, in, in the human heart. And um, so this song uh, is about my own longing to be a part of a story and to actually feel that I was part of a story. And, you know, stories have adventure they have challenges um, every good story has parts that are difficult and so um, in a way I think it's comforting knowing that uh, just because we're in a difficult season doesn't mean that it, there's no purpose it doesn't mean that uh, there's not light at the end of the tunnel and there's something good coming and so I was thinking about all those things and wanted to channel it into a song uh, that meant something to me and so this song is called better than a fairy tale and please wherever you are looking at your computer screen feel free to sing along with us Tell me a story of heroes and battles cause I want to know what it's like to fight for something I believe in with all that I've got cause right now I'm not hey and I only wake up my dreams have been sleeping all day long stuck inside these walls Ooh, I, I know that there's something more a story worth living for even better than a fairy tale so tell me a story of lovers and heartache Cause I want to know what it's like To give it all away for some 
someone that I die for someone who makes it all worthwhile and I only wake up in my dreams I've been sleeping all day long stuck inside these walls Ooh, I I know that there's something more a story worth living for even better than a fairy tale I want to run as far as I can go want to feel like I'm more than a shadow want to get to the part where I know I only wake up in my dreams I've been sleeping all day long Stuck inside these walls Ooh, I, I know that there's something more A story worth living for Even better than and someday I'll tell you my story of triumph and tears how I conquered my fears this here one of my favorite uh, moments of the tour the last tour was singing that actually with uh, Nita Tietze, yeah, Mary Ellen, your wife. Awesome. And uh, she really stole the show on that song. She sang it much better than me, and uh, <laughs> it was quite a special moment. That was awesome. I had all the couples up there. Yeah, you know, it was interesting. The, um, our band was three couples, and uh, so it was lots of love uh, on the stage there, and lots of love with you guys, too. Well, um... It wouldn't, be, uh, it wouldn't be a proper show if I didn't sing this song. And uh, I just want to say, you know, this song has totally changed my life, uh, really because of you all. And um, I'll never forget when I first discovered that this song had gone viral on Chinese social media. Uh, and I was just in my room, just a humble indie artist in Nashville, and uh, was getting messages from many of you at the time, you know, just a lot of Chinese teenagers saying, hey, do you know your song has millions of plays on uh, Wang Yi, Nettie's music? And uh, I was just, it was just a crazy experience for me. And so um, we're going to sing this song. And uh, it's a story. It's another fairy tale. And uh, I just hope that wherever you are, you'll sing along. And uh, when we get to the ah, now I gave it away. Now you know what song it is. But... <laughs> When we get to that part, Spoiler. I want each of you to sing along wherever you are, looking at your computer or your phone. Sing along, okay? And uh, yeah, this song is called Sleepyhead. And we're going to play the midnight version for you tonight. <laughs> Good job. In the year of our Lord 1239, there once lived a girl of a royal line. The ancient stories do recall, she was the fairest of them all. In a castle made of stone, made of stone. every night she slept alone. Any noise that would raise the dead. 
couldn't wake her sleepy head. Oh, e o So much. Well, we have one more song for you all. Thank you for uh, being with us and for singing along. I can hear your voices singing very loud in my head. It's quiet in here, but I can still hear you in here. So, uh, this last song, um, on a more serious note, this song uh, came from a place where. Um, I was going through some challenges and was looking for hope and encouragement and actually many of you have uh, told me that this song has actually healed you in some way and uh, I remember even on the last tour several of you coming up to me and saying that you had been struggling with depression but you listened to this song and it uh, healed you or brought you out of that in some way and so I just hope that as I sing this next song here with DJ, and this is our last one. Um, whatever you're going through, whatever difficult thing may be weighing on you, uh, it's my wish that as we sing this song, you just begin to feel peace and you begin to feel uh, lighter and, and uh, begin to feel light and hope come through whatever cloud is, is over you at the moment. The song is called Lifter. <laughs> in my heart praises in my heart for you Holy Spirit fill me up Spirit fill me up anew Awaken my heart again You're raising from the dead to Jesus. 
Jesus, my living hope, and the lifter of my head. My soul trembles at your voice, sweetly trembles when you draw me near. I find rest beneath your wings, perfect love casts out all fear. Awaken my heart again, you're raising me from the dead, to Jesus my living hope. And the lifter of my head And I pour my life out I pour my life out to you, to you. I pour my life out to you. I pour. Awaken my heart again You're raising me from the dead To Jesus my living hope And the lifter of my head The lifter of my head Sissia Dadja, thank you so much for joining us. It's been, uh, it's been fun. Thank you, DJ, for being here. And, uh, well, I name in. So I'm looking over some of your questions now. I just wanted to answer a few of them. Man, 2020 has been uh, a very unique year, hasn't it? I know it's been difficult for a lot of people, um, just realizing that just about every nation on the earth has faced challenges or uh changes um during this pandemic and that's been interesting to, to see that you know a lot of what we're facing we're all facing together and going through it um so for me um you know my family and i we've been fine we're well and i'm thankful for that um you know in a lot of ways it's it's kind of uh given me a chance to uh rest actually 2019 was a really busy year for me. Um, I just kind of stayed going, you know, doing a lot of different things. Uh, I was working so hard all the time, very busy. And um, so this year with some of the, you know, the quarantines and the shutdowns, it kind of forced me to take a little bit of a break and just uh, rest and reflect and in some ways, it's been an opportunity to reset. And by reset, I mean, you know, thinking through everything in life of just, you know, what are the things that are most important to me? How do I want to spend my time? Um, asking big, deep questions like that, and just um, a lot of in introspection, just thinking through, you know, with the we only have one life, right? And the time that we're given is precious. And so just wanting to make the most of it. And sometimes actually making the most of your time doesn't mean just doing more. It can mean actually resting and uh, maybe spending a little bit more time with your your loved ones, your your family and friends. And um, and so that's it's been a lot of that for me. Now, at the same time, I've also been writing and working on some new things, which I'm 
really excited to, to maybe I'll share a little bit uh, more with, with you about that in a little bit, but there's been some creative things as well that have come out of this that I'm excited about. Ever since my first trip to China, which was in uh, May 2016, May and June, I have just totally fallen in love with the Chinese people. Um, I, it's, it's really special to me because, um, you know, my songs are actually more popular in China than any other country in the world. And so for me as an artist, it's been so meaningful to realize that, um, you all, many of you, you all in China understand my music and, uh, what I'm doing creatively more than any other country in the world. Um, and so that's fascinating to me. And it's been, it's presented a, a great opportunity for me to get to know more about China and, um, you know, visiting there has been an absolutely incredible experience every time. I've been to China three times now. Um, my most recent tour was, was last year, right before all this stuff uh, started with the virus. But uh, so I was there in November and December of 2019. And every time I go to China, it's just, it's just been a wonderful adventure. Obviously, my favorite part is getting to meet a lot of you all, the fans, face to face uh, after the shows. And that's, that's been really fun. And that's, that's what I love is getting to actually um, to see faces and talk to people and get to hear some of the personal ways that my music has uh, maybe affected you or impacted you inspired you or helped you through a difficult time. That hearing those things from you all in China that are personal and real to you, that's my favorite part of all of this because, because you know, I'm here in America and it's a lot, it's the other side of the world, right? And uh, it's so cool that we can even be this connected uh, because of the internet today. It's really amazing. Never before in the world has that been possible for us to be this connected. So it's incredible, but even so, sometimes I can kind of forget that, um, you know, the, these these things that we see on the internet, like we're all, we're real people, aren't we? And so it's, uh, it's it, it puts it all together to me f to actually see, okay, you know, I knew people were listening to my songs in these different cities in China, but when I go and I play a show there and I get to hear you guys singing and talk to you, you know, after the concert, I just love that. And so that part of it for me has been wonderful. Um, and I love how peaceful the Chinese people are. Um, I find that you all have so many endearing qualities that I really admire. And the food is amazing. Uh, I have had some of the best food that I've ever tried in my life in China. Uh, and so that's been so fun, you know, knowing how how much food is a part of the culture and how each city in China, you guys have your own different dishes that are unique to that city or something that, you know, each city is kind of known for. And I really enjoy getting to try each of those things and experience um, your culture in that way. And I've enjoyed walking around the cities a lot too, like, I know uh, one of the highlights for me in my second tour in 2016, uh, going to Chengdu, and we just walked around Chengdu a lot and saw some, we did some touristy things like go to the, the zoo and see the pandas, <laughs> which was, was, that was pretty cool. And um, I got to walk around uh, Beijing a lot this last time and Shanghai as well, and Guangzhou, which was amazing because um, and I have a lot of friends in Guangzhou, so I love that city so much too. I love all the cities. It's some of you have asked me what my favorite city is, and I can't choose one. I, I have totally fallen in love with every city in China that I've been to, and I I mean that it's very it's very true. So, yeah, I that's kind of I I just am so grateful for the relationship that I have now with the Chinese people through this 
special connection that we have through my music where, you know, I, as really a young guy, starting about 10 years ago or so, started writing songs just in my bedroom and nobody knew who I was and nobody was listening to them. But um, to see how many of you all on the other side of the world have um, been moved or really connected with the essence of what I was trying to say as an artist, um, this is, it's an amazing thing. And I think that this is something that we will share forever this special connection we have. So thank you for uh, for listening to my music, for supporting me. Uh, just know that uh, you have a special place in my heart. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll always love you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I think all artists uh, draw from what inspires them, right? So the things that, that, that feed artists are a lot of the same things that they create or it, it influences what they create and so I am inspired by a lot of fairy tales or um, fantasy stories um, and that can include you know a lot of movies too like but mostly books and stories that are older um, some things written like hundreds of years ago that really inspire me um, and I think some of the reasons for that are a lot of writers will use fairy tales to communicate a message or an idea um, through imagery, right? Or through imagined worlds and circumstances. And so that imagery, the, the you know, the different worlds and the different realms and um, different eras this feeds into our imagination and it takes us somewhere else, right? So that's the first effect of the, these stories like fairy tales and such. It takes you out of your mind right now and where you are and what your life looks like and transports you to another world and another realm. And that's there's something exciting about that. There's something really interesting about going on that journey um, you know, through a story to, to somewhere else. So there's that. And then within that, you find that, okay, within this new world that's really different, I find similarities about the human heart, even there. So what I mean by that is a lot of times there's, there's truth packed into a story or a, a fairy tale that is true forever, eternally, no matter what culture you're in or what time period of the world, there are certain things just about the human heart and about the the world and our existence that are always true. And so with a lot of my songs, that's kind of what I'm doing, is thinking about something that, you know, I want to say, or something that I really believe in, or a, a kind of feeling or idea that's inspiring me. And instead of just saying it openly using blunt, simple words, I'll craft a story or a fairy tale that sort of inspires me and takes me somewhere. But within that, there's still that core uh, meaning or message that pretty much anyone could relate to at any time. And so a lot of my songs, that's the place that they come from. And so I use fairy tales and stories as vehicles to communicate different thoughts and ideas that I think are um, meaningful and, and, hope, and have a, a hopeful, healing um, depth and, and message to them. Um, so I hope that kind of gives you an idea. I really love um, like the Lord of the Rings, uh, stories like that or um, The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien are both um, authors that have really inspired me. And those stories, you know, I read some of these stories like when I was a kid, you know, when I was just really young and um, they've, they've stayed with me. Uh, and so those kinds of books, and I still read a lot of like old fairy tales and, um, 
I, I kind of, I look for that stuff and it, it, it just, it feeds me and I like, I, I, I am inspired by those kinds of authors and stories, even if they're not musicians. So it's interesting, like I have plenty of, there's plenty of musicians out there that inspire me a lot, but I find that uh, many authors have inspired me uh, equally, um, even though, you know, I don't think J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were were musicians. I mean, they certainly weren't artists, but their work was so artistic, uh, so artistically rich that it's inspired me as an artist, um, even though I'm a musician. And to be honest with you, in some ways, I kind of think of myself more as an author than than a, a, a performing a performing artist or a musician, which sounds funny, um, but there's a sense in which I kind of feel that way, that I, I sort of think of myself as like half musician and half author, as somebody who is crafting um, stories and and crafting um, you know w w different worlds, so to speak, or pulling dr uh, pulling inspiration and ideas from other worlds and bringing them here. Uh, so it sounds funny to talk about probably, but that's kind of just where my head's at. So I hope that's illuminating uh, for those of you who wanted to know about that. Yes, absolutely. Man, I have so many new songs and some of them are done. Some of them I'm still working on, uh, I'm still writing. Some of them have been written already, but I'm still working on the actual recordings. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm doing all the work here in this room, actually, and so it's it's great. And um, I I'll have a new EP or album to release to you. I'm not sure when it will be finished, but um, I'm certainly eager for you to hear it. And um, I think about you guys a lot as I'm working and just thinking about um, you know different experiences I've had. And actually, every time I go to China, I always come back home really inspired. So it's something about the effect that you guys have on me is that just the tours and meeting you all has had a very uh, profound effect on me. And so just like all the other tours, um, like actually I wrote Fragrance in China. The first time I ever went to China was when I wrote Fragrance there. And um, so that was in 2016 that I wrote that. And this most recent uh, tour in China in 2019 was also very inspiring for me. And so I came home with a lot of fresh ideas and different thoughts. And then just going through, you know, this year has been, as I've been processing that, I've also had some new songs kind of come out of that place. And just thinking about that and thinking, uh, you know, what do I want to say uh, here? And so... There's lots of lots of new things I'm working on that I'm so excited for you to hear. And actually, I'd like to um, let you in on what's been a little secret up to this point, but I've been writing a song in Chinese, which has been uh, such a joy and such a wonderful um, experience for me so far. Challenging, because I can't, you know, 我中文说的不好。and uh so <laughs> writing a song in chinese is not easy and i have a friend who is helping me with that but i've had this idea and and i wanted to write the idea into a song in chinese specifically for the chinese people and so i'm still working on that and you'll be the first to know obviously when it's done and when i'm releasing it and i can't reveal that yet but just know that that's something I'm working on and that's coming and I can't wait to share it with you. I'm so excited. I can't, I'm so excited to come to China again. I just, you know, kind of like everyone, I'm not sure um, what the future holds as far as when I'll be able to come, but as soon as it's possible and safe um, for me to do so, I'll be very eager to plan another tour but as we know, this whole thing has been kind of hard to predict what's going to happen next. And so the answer is, I will absolutely come to China again soon. I just don't know when, but I hope it's sooner rather than later, because I'm very much looking forward to seeing you all again. I really want to go back to all the cities that I've been to. 
already and I would love to visit some new cities as well because I hear from many of you uh, online in certain cities in China that I haven't even visited yet. And so that's that's definitely in my heart to get back as soon as I can. And I hope that many of you will come out to the shows next time I'm in China. So, all right, well, I hope this has been fun. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them, you know, just comment on my pages and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. But um, yeah, I'm grateful for you all. Thanks for spending this time with me. And uh, yeah, well, I mean, well, uh, I'll see. I tried to say something in Chinese and I messed it up. Well, I, Neiman. Okay. 再见。